Good morning and welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. If you've just joined us, you missed quite a bit, but good you joined us now. Well, time for us to take a look at the headlines on some of the national dailies. And we are beginning with the leadership newspaper. The leadership newspaper starts with this. Well, the headline here is National Assembly. Tinubu APC leaders meet to decide on zoning. And the writers to that... House Caucus presents zoning template. Oji Kalu Izunaso Akbabio Barao others besiege the president elect's residence. Ex lawmakers caution against zoning along executive lines. All right, if you move away from that and go to the top, very top, you see Onyema, a foreign minister, and he's saying that no Nigerian has died in Sudan conflict. And beside that, you have the picture of the Lagos State Governor, uh, Babajide Sonwolu, and uh, it has to do with Banana Island. Lagos begins removal of illegal structures. That is quite um, a thing. And then when you go to the side, you'll find states get 48-hour ultimatum to remit 2023 Hajj Fair. That story, you can read it on page 10 of that newspaper, the leadership newspaper. States get 48-hour ultimatum to remit 2023 Hajj Fair. Mm. Can't wait for what's going to come out of that. Court dismisses for feature order on Kogi governor's assets. You find that story on page 16. Adamawa Paul Binani drops suit against Fintiri Ainek others. <laughs> Page six. <laughs> <laughs> Binani has dropped the lawsuit. Oh, so much has come out in the wake of these elections. <laughs> yeah. Nigerian elections are just amazing. Drama. But of course, it's not peculiar to Nigeria. The U.S. is also having theirs to deal with. Well, right there on top, you have this rider. Gunmen kill two soldiers. 15 civilians kidnapped 29 in Benue, Abuja. You find the full stories on page 7 of the leadership newspaper. Nyamgo. Okay, we'll move to Punch now, where we have the major story on Punch. Sudan conflicts. Students lament a slow evacuation and federal government to pay $1.2 million. Uh, the writers are saying only 15 out of 40 buses ready on Wednesday conveyed 750 students. Uh, that's what the students are saying. So 750 were conveyed out of uh, Sudan as at yesterday, out of 5,500. Minister says cost, that is the 1.2 million, uh, covers 19-hour journey, security from Sudan to Cairo. That's what the money will be spent on. Uh, 4,000 people, or trucks rather, uh, that's down below uh, on page... Uh, 26, if you want to read, uh, 4,000 trucks to visit Lekki Port daily. Okay, <laughs> another papa loading. Um, Lagos State government demolishes, okay, we've had that in the other paper, so we'll try to just uh, move on to others that may, we may not have heard or have different angles. OB attacks INEC for defending Tinubu Atiku claims victory. That's up there at the top, if you want to read it, is on page 8. Then we also have on page 9, cash scarcity crippled Nigeria's economy. That's according to the UN. Tinubu speaker uh, aspirants meet on zoning behind closed doors. That is on page 8 as well. Uh, that's the much we can take on punch. Over to you. Okay, the Nation newspaper is the next and... Expectedly, it's leading with Tinubu's story. Tinubu APC target consensus Senate president, speaker. You have pictures of the president-elect right there, flanked by so many people. You have uh, the Lagos State Governor. You have uh, Oji Uzokalu. You have Nuhu Ribado. Uh, you know, you're seeing some faces. You have Femi Bajabiamila. All of them, uh, is that... A liquid angotium thing? <laughs> yeah, okay. So it, it just gets more interesting as the president elect forms his team. Mm. So we just watch and see how all that is playing out. You have the rider ruling party favors Christian to lead Red Chamber. Mm. Okay, so going down, you have election petition, Atiku Obi 
attack INEC. And right up, PDP LP candidates reply to Nubu. You get the full story of that. Uh, well, the full story will continue on page five, even though it starts a bit on the front page. 500 Nigerians evacuated to Egypt in 10 buses. Uh, 13 stranded students allowed into Ethiopia. Fighting continues despite 72 hours ceasefire. And so when you look up, you have um, Nigeria Air will fly before May 20th. That's according to the minister. Well, that's pretty much it for the nation newspaper. Okay. We also move now to The Guardian where we have marketers in limbo over implementation 15.1 billion dollar fx demand for fuel importation oh there's also a story court strikes out efcc suit against kogi governor yaya bello over asset for future and i'm encumbered by scandals atiku replies tinobu's serial loser job we also have a story saying Nigeria has the highest number of collapsed buildings in Africa, according to Sun DG. That story is on page 7 of The Guardian. Debts, delay, frustration on Lagos Ibadan, endless road repair. There's a news analysis on page 4 on that. Uncertainty trails emergence of new alafi. Okay, well, that's a traditional institution. We're hoping there will be no problems there. Um, those are headlines on uh, the Guardian newspaper this morning. And so we move on to join our uh, guest for this morning that will be talking on uh, these headlines. We're, we're glad to have Mr. Ezekiel Nyaitok, public affairs analyst, uh, talking to us all the way from Aquaibom. Good morning and welcome to uh, the program, sir. Good morning, good morning Mr. Morning. Etok. Yes. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I, I was just going to tell Enyamgo that he forgot to add former governorship aspirant. Mm. Candidate. 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 Yeah, candidate. I was going to say Thanks that. Thanks for, for, for that. Governorship can... candidate, mm -hmm. Aquaibom State. How did it go, though, before we go into the news? <laughs> Just one, one sentence. How was yeah, it during um, the elections? Did it meet your expectations? It, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's something that we really should sit down and reflect and think of. You know, there are the three C's I talk about. There is the chances that come your way. There are the choices that you make. And there are the consequences of that. The last election brought up a certain level of hope and, you know, people were like looking bright and them expecting something. And it hit a real hard brick wall. All right. We and need to we have really a as a nation to sat have... down. Yeah. yeah we, have we, we, we need to... as a nation sat down to think of the implication of what just happened. Yeah, time will not allow us to talk <laughs> deeper on that because I'm sure you have a lot to say. But right now, because of time, let's move straight to the newspapers. And uh, let's start with the headline on the Nation newspaper. Tinubu APC target consensus Senate president and speaker. And the writer there is that uh, the ruling party favors Christian to lead the Red Chamber. How do you respond to that? The clamor and the desperate uh, lobbying regarding this okay there are two the things the very first thing yes i'll talk about is what we call emotional intelligence if you read the mood of the nation right now that talk about muslim muslim ticket was really really a major talking point and caused such level of division in the country that is almost unprecedented so I think that it's only emotionally, um, intelligently wise that the third person, being the president of the Senate and the chairman of the National Assembly, should take the other faith. So for me, it goes without saying that you don't even need to think about it. The Christian should be the next um, Senate president. Now, one would say, no, let's not compromise um, you know, quality for religion and other considerations. And I would find that a very lame and almost infuriating, you know, comment because I can point to you at the very least 10 extremely, ex in fact, 
if you talk of the top 10 in the whole National Assembly and top five, all considered, I will tell you one, two Christians that are there in the top five and even the top three. So we really do have them in, in abundance. So it's only wise that it should be a Christian. And going by the past um, permutations, it should actually come to the South. That's the standard procedure. And when you talk of the South, you are now looking at the South, South, and the South East. And, um, you know, if you look at it again uh, in analysis, the South East has had several of the, um, of, of the past Senate presidents. But Joseph Wires of the God Knows, you can't even remember when, was the only person that has come from the South, South. Again, I was the national chairman of a party. And one of the things about party politics is that members of the party want to be rewarded for hard work. And when you look at the South, South, the South is without sentiment. The South, South take the real big cake because they really rewarded APC beyond their wildest imagination. So I think that it would be microzone to the South-South. And within the South-South, I think it's very clear who stands up, you know. In fact, within Nigeria, all the senators put together, I think Mr., in my opinion, Mr. Goswil Akpabio stands out. So I think that he's in a pole position to really, like, tick all the boxes and um, be the next Senate president. Okay, uh, well, uh, let me just take this time and digress a little bit. I do hope that the federal government will do something about the burial of Joseph Wires. He deserves a state burial. And up till this moment, so many months ago that he died, he has still not been buried or even brought back to Nigeria uh, for that purpose. And I don't know why that is happening. Everybody keeps uh, pointing out. Let, me, let me join you. You've made a very important point there. You know, we just let certain things fall through the cracks. Mr. Joseph Wyers, for more reasons than one, deserves a state burial. Yep. And I want to join you to call on the federal government mm. to look into that matter. I know what the family is like. I know what they are going through. But we cannot forget that he is the only Senate president, number three person, that has come from the south-south zone of Nigeria. Yeah. He deserves much better. Okay. Uh, well, now back to uh, what we're talking about, about the Senate presidency. Oh, just the positions that are, they're talking about zoning and all that. Uh, prior to the presidential election, they were saying that one of the arguments was that um, religion should never determine whatever is going to happen. And then the Muslim-Muslim ticket flew as it is. Uh, when we say that... Um, the Senate president has to be a Christian. Is it not that we are going back and revisiting something that we thought we may have left behind by yeah, al allowing you know, this thing to fly? I brought out two things. First, emotional intelligence. Second, competence. Those two factors are very important. I, for a person, I will not sacrifice competence for sentimental reasoning. I will not. But where you have a man or people that tick all the boxes, this man scores 90, the other person scores maybe 91. I can give it to the person that has 90 above 91 because for two reasons. Number one, the differential is insignificant relatively. And number two, if this other person has taken all the prizes, you know, or has been the one at the saddle all along. Just to be able to create a level of inclusivity, I will give it to the next person, and I'll feel right. As at today, I say this with every sense of responsibility. The South, South has stars that you can, that they can measure up by any stretch of imagination. And as a result, we are not being sentimental, we are being factual, and a man like Mr. Goswil Akpabio, I keep saying this, sticks all the boxes and he deserves to be, you know, if we were to go into details, this is a newspaper review, but I've taken time to do an analysis of all the different people, but we can't do that here. If we had a full program, I'll tell you why all considered, forget about where you come from, forget about who you are, forget about religion, forget about any sentiment, you cannot talk of the top three of all the senators that are there. And Mr. Akpabio is not ranking first or second, strictly as an individual. 
because of what he's been in the past. You know, he's, he's not just a lawyer by profession. He wasn't just a first-class governor that people see talk about about what uncommon transformation in Akwa Ibom uh, State. He thank, was not thank just you. somebody who thank you, Mr. Ibom. Okay, we wish uh, Akwabio and every other one who is aspiring well. May God give us the one that we need in Nigeria at this time. Not a rubber stamp uh, Senate president, that's what we're looking for. Uh, but talk to the fact that um, uh, the, the ruling party is at this time looking for where to zone the offices to. Shouldn't this have been something that uh, they should have done a long time ago? Does this say well of a political party? You have been a member of the political party and a national chairman as well. So what does it say about the management and the internal politics of a political party if at this time, barely about 30 days to inauguration, they are thinking of where the Senate presidency should go and other offices? You see, Mr. Tinubu, with all due respect, if it pleases God and he's eventually sworn in, he has to be a very complete departure from what APC has had as their stock in trade. APC wakes up in the morning and they are, wow, they are like, oh, it's morning. For goodness sake, when you wake up, for the since I was born, once you wake up, it's morning. So why are you surprised that as you woke up, it's morning? Why am I saying this? Miss APC as a party knew that, you know, they were not opposition. They stood a chance of winning. As a result, you know, my mother used to tell me something that I find instructive. It says, don't share money when it's on the table. Share money before it gets to the table. I found that very instructive. What that means is that these positions should have been made clear by the party long before today. Now, this, now that will allow, even they are, if they knew that this was the case, some people wouldn't even have contested. Some other people would have loved it and contested so that they know that this is being zoned to their zone or this is not going to be their zone. Secondly, many of them will not waste money going around and conversing for votes and support when eventually you come and say, oh, it's going to be zoned to the other people, they are going to be hurt. They are going to be unhappy. And as a result, there's going to be a lot of disaffection within the party. Mr. Tinubu should know that he is now elected the president. As a result, there are certain things that should be done, not last minute, but way ahead of time to inspire confidence in Nigerians that this man is a departure from the APC that we've been very unhappy with. So for me, they really should, by today, know the ministries they have, are they going to downsize, are they going to go, remain where they are, should be able to have a very clear idea of who is going to be the ministers that is going to nominate. He should be able to know what the party should know, what the zoning formula should be by now, and he should know what he wants to do to hit the ground running from day one. And though the new constitution allows him 60 days to bring his nominees, I expected that as at today, he would already have his list out. I believe that one of the things, and I hope I'm right, that one of the things he did in being out of the country for a while must have been to sit down without the pressures to be able to articulate his minister's list. If that isn't what he went to do, then I'm surprised or I'm I'm afraid that we are in for another rough ride. Away from that, if we may, and go to Sudan's situation, the situation in Sudan and evacuation of Nigerians living there. You've seen all that's going on in the news and the interviews granted by Onbra Bike Dabiri. We've also interviewed uh, a Loma official, Nima official, who gave us details of preparations towards evacuating them. Now we hear that they are being evacuated. Buses have been hired. Matter of fact, 40 buses have been hired to that effect. Give us your thoughts on all that's playing out with regards to these processes. Okay, there are two things. I keep saying this, people don't understand what government is and what governance is. One of the most critical things about government and governance is what you call the foresight team. The foresight team are people who, in the moment of peace, of prosperity, 
of comfort. Look beyond the now, forecast the next 10 years, 20 years, look at issues around the globe and say, if this happens, this is what should be. If this happens, this is what should be. They are ahead of time. Now, these are the sort of people that when a conflict is, is in the offing, when they, say, they sit down and say, sir, if it happens to come this way, this is what you should do. Consequently, you are armed as a, a, a chief executive or the commander-in-chief to take decisions that are well thought out because they, you had preempted the situation before time. Come to Sudan. Don't tell me the arrangements you are making. Don't tell me the plans. Please, let me see that while America was still thinking of what to do, the Nigerian plan had landed because they had already known what the plans would be, what they are supposed to do. Let me see that proactive decision you have taken. Don't tell me how you have hired. You know, they tell us, oh, we are hiring uh, 100 bosses, 40 bosses. Nobody wants to know how you are getting about. Just do it. Nike says, just do it. Be giving us results. Don't be telling us your plans. We are not interested in your planning. We didn't give you that to go and tell us what you are planning. Unless you want to give you your foresight. But when a situation happens, give us situation report. What you have done and not what you intend to do. You have a window of three days. And now you are telling me how we have burning bosses. We have about over 2,000 people. And the window is about to close. You are saying, oh, we brought out 700 already. That's not good enough. A Nigerian, Mr. the owner of um, um, APs, offered to, you know, afraid the people. And there was dead silence. Let me shock you. That offer of uh, Mr. Allen might have infuriated some people because for them, this is opportunity to make money, opportunity for contract. And now you want to offer free. You want to take the now that some deal has come to our side of the divide. You now want to come and put sand in our gary. That is how people view government, means of making money and not ways of offering service. Okay, well, some would say in favor of uh, the federal government that this is a war situation and there, there must be caution in implementing evacuations or carrying out evacuations. Uh, Britain, for instance, the UK, their, their citizens are arriving, I think they arrived this morning or yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it, it, some would say the, the federal government of Nigeria is receiving too much knocks when people should have been more patient with them. No, no, we can't be. Let me tell you something, and I want us to take this, if nothing else. Nigerians are among the most intelligent in the whole world. And I say it with every sense of responsibility, back with data and statistics, go to America, they will tell you that we are the most enlightened immigrants in the whole of the United States of America. Go to any of the intelligence bureaus or units in the whole world, you will find Nigerians there at the highest level. Why am I saying that? Why should Britain be a reference point to me, which is what I talked about? You have people who sit down, who for sight, they notice a war situation. Not as a Why reference can't point. Britain? No, let Not me say Not as a this. reference point, but in comparison well, with what's happening with other nations, with regards to evacuating their people from Sudan. other nations, Let's, listen, this is very instructive. Mm. Why can't other nations say, look at what is happening in Nigeria? They did it at Ebola time. Other nations came to study what is happening in Nigeria. We can be ahead. It's about planning, strategic thinking and planning. And we have the most strategic, the best strategic thinkers from Nigeria. So why can't America say, look at what Nigeria has done? This is the new Nigeria we want to get into. We have them. So why don't you say, America have done it. Come to this, eh, Britain have done it. Britain should be saying, what, what has Nigeria done? Because they know that Nigeria has a pool of strategic thinkers who know that this is a war situation. They've already set up, you know, alternatives, plan A, plan B, plan C. And we are on top of the game. We can be on top of the game when we know that we are not inferior in any way. Okay, um, let's, let's, uh, let's move away, away from that. Uh, 
to another thing. Nigeria, uh, the Minister of Aviation is insisting that Nigeria Air will fly before May 29. May 29 is about 30 days away. Uh, there are already litigations uh, regarding that. Uh, some people are saying they shouldn't be given the certification that they're asking for. Uh, it seems nothing is ready, but they are insisting that the Nigeria Air will fly before May 29. Possibly just to give this administration a pat on the back and say, well, you have done well. Do you think that is feasible? I, I, I think that um, we, we react, we don't. It's the same thing I said. Now, you want Nigeria Air, they've been talking Nigeria Air, talking Nigeria Air, as at today, there's a saying in our language that when saliva stays too long in the mouth, it turns to water. Nigerians are sick and tired. Please don't tell me the day you are ready to fly. If you can't fly, leave us where we are. Don't come and talk to us about Nigeria. Hey, we don't want to know. All I want to hear is, gentlemen, go to the airport. You will see the stand of Nigeria Air. Eh? You know, just buy, buy your ticket. Because it's Nigeria Air, eh, this is the strategic advantage you have. Maybe students, you have your rebate that has come back. Maybe elderly, you have a rebate that we are bringing up. Because this government is about social service and responsibility. So Nigeria here is created particularly not to unnecessarily compete with others, but is created as a social infrastructure with certain arms that are going to be commercially viable. Our business class is going to be top-notch. It's not for social. It's going to be one that is on time. If you are a businessman coming, we're going to be very expensive on the business class, very expensive, but you'll get the highest level of quality of service. The reason is that we want to do cut and fill, make the business class to be able to pay or subsidize for part of the economy where we are going to have a lot of social service. The business class is going to be a little bigger. The economy might be a little smaller than conventional because this is our thinking. We want to make sure that government serves its purpose, which is taking care of the most vulnerable. Chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2B says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So for these people, students who must go from one place to the other, and the roads, even if they are safe, but sometimes are too long. So all the students, you have 25% rebate. So go to Nigeria Air. All the old people, go to Nigeria Air. All the businessmen, the top class people, go to Nigeria Air. You'll find a business class like no other airline. The way we are going to do better is going to be more expensive. So if you want the best, you've got to pay for it. All right, let's go to Adamawa State, where, uh, according to leadership, uh, Binani, has dropped suit against Vintiri and INEC. Respond to uh, that. Uh, yeah, um, the very first thing is that if we are to go to Binani's case, I think it will be an anti-climax. We've talked a lot about it. I think that she's wise because, you know, it, it's like you want to fire somebody and the guy hears about it and says, well, sir, I wish to resign. I think she is um, wise and well advised because if she had made the mistake of wanting to proceed with that suit, I mean, if I were the judge, the, the words that I will use on her, I think she will not um, like to have it. So I want to hail her. I, I was very upset with what she did, but better late than no never. She has saved us our taxpayers' money bringing judges and wasting our time and giving the judiciary time to face more important issues because she has a no issue. But the fact that she is wise enough to say, I lay it down, maybe we should just, for whatever is worth, give her kudos because she had no case whatsoever. All right, thank you so much. Well, before we go, just because um, this same uh, topic is still on leadership, that's uh, Tinubu APC leaders meet to decide on zoning. Let's just touch it briefly again and, and perhaps this time look at Tinubu's transition committee. Uh, a section of Indibo have criticized it, saying that they are not part of it. There's no Igbo name on that list of 14 members, I believe. What, what's your take on that? 
The first thing is that there is an Igbo name that has dropped heavily today. I don't know where, I don't know how, I don't know why. And I'm on my way to Lagos to go and celebrate that Igbo name. She is called Madame Obi Ezekwesili, and today is her 60th birthday. Mm. That said, <laughs> no, so we shall so much good and well. Mm. That said, that is an event planning committee. Why they should advertise an event planning committee beats me. I don't understand. If you must advertise an event planning committee, wisdom demands that you should know that people are going to do strategic analysis. And there's been this uh, talk about South is South is South is. It's a function of emotional intelligence. You should have, for whatever is worth, in fact, it was a very good way to even mask certain things. Boom, boom, boom. Put three South East names and people think that, whoa, that, but that's not a transition committee. Unless it's another one, or but the one I know mm. is that that is an event planning committee. Are you telling me that we don't have people with protocols from the South East? You don't have people in media from the South East? You don't have people in, um, you know, the different aspects of that in the South East. They are there. Well, so as why it has happened just... like this, as it has happened like this, what, what does that signal to you? Thank what? you. There's a Greek saying that is a Greek saying. You won't understand. No, that's but what that it means that, <laughs> is that it says that you start from sleep to learn about death. I think it's a very wrong signal, but I'm happy that that wrong signal is done on an, a relatively inconsequential thing. Mr. Tinubu, if God wills and he's sworn in, should please, please make sure that he lets the South Easterners, if I had my way, as he returned to the country, he probably would have just taken a flight to the South East to say, well, I just came to see how people are doing, how's everything, blah, 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 and gone back. It would have cost him nothing. Maybe people would say, whoa, he's going to the southeast. Wow, maybe there's this. Let him start to have conversations that make people feel that, or he should have come back in an Igbo attire. Do you understand me? Coming back, can you imagine him alighting from the aircraft, glad in that Igbo regalia with the red cap? I mean, let's start to have people who think in government. Yeah, you are the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So today there's a lot of division. So you want to be able to show that, no, 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 I'm coming in to be the father of all. And there are just little things you could do, and then the narrative will start to change. Nigerians are so easy to impress. Little things will make them to go wild for you. Ezekiel Nya Itok, public affairs analyst and former governorship candidate at Kaibom State. Thank you so much They're for your insight. We're still in the tribunal, now, so don't be in a hurry to close oh, the chapter oh, yet. Oh, whoa, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay. My tribunal is not, uh, is different. I want to get people jailed for stealing my vote. We are doing the most elaborate analysis and coming to, look, just follow it. Let, let your station follow it. They'll be amazed at what they will see. We definitely okay. will follow it. Thank you so much for your time and insight. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. That was quite incisive, isn't yes, it? Yes, it, it was. It was very interesting. And um, I was silent about the fact that almost every report is carrying a different number of people that has been evacuated from Sudan. Mm. Uh, some carried 750, some carried 500, and the other one carried 300. And I don't know which the official figures are. And uh, the they government... May, they may not actually have the accurate accurate figure because they can't even say how many people are in a bus as it stands right now. Uh, I don't that, know that should they that be do the know. case? It shouldn't be, but I'm not sure that they do know. Uh, well, you're still watching The Breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. We'll take a short break, but we'll return. We'll be talking, we'll be taking our, uh, one, our first hot topic today, and we'll be looking at the debt uh, that Nigeria has incurred over the years. Stay with us. <laughs> 